know, the great thing about electricity is uh, you get full torque from zero RPM. It's eerily quiet. It's amazing. It doesn't make any noise. Watch me take off. One another episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car I'm standing next to, 1909 Baker Electric. This is not the car we're featuring today. Today we're going to feature a very early Tesla Roadster. You know, it's interesting. I was going back through the archives, and I found some footage of Elon Musk when he first came to my garage 13 years ago to show me the Tesla Roadster. This has never aired on my YouTube channel. And I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. Let's take people back. Because now those cars are coming on the market. They're used cars. Are they holding their value? We, we evaluated one on my CNBC show. And you'd be surprised, because they're very easy to update. You can take a Tesla Roadster from, you know, what, 2010 or 8 or 9, and put the more modern batteries in it to double the range. You can put a more powerful engine. So it's really kind of cool. But to have uh, Elon drive it over to my garage, uh, it was such an honor at the time, because although he was a visionary then, he wasn't the visionary we know now. I mean, he was getting started with a new idea, and there was a lot of skepticism, and people were saying, well, that's stupid, that's not going to work. And of course, it revolutionized the electric car market. I mean, the Tesla I have with the Model S is the fastest accelerating four-door sedan you can buy. That used to be the Bentley Turbo R back in 1988 when I bought my Turbo R. That was the fastest accelerating sedan you could buy in America. Now it doesn't even come close. But anyway, I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing uh, a younger Jay Leno and a younger Elon. And uh, oh, don't worry, I'm still, still wearing the same clothes. In fact, I can't prove it, but I think this is the exact same shirt I had on when I talked to Elon. Here, take a look. Well, this is very exciting. This is a car that you've, uh, you've seen in all the magazines you've heard about. Uh, this is the first production model. This is the first customer car. This is the Tesla Roadster. You know, the all-electric, zero-emission Roadster. Uh, if it looks a little dirty, it's because I've uh, been driving it. It's got 500 miles on it, and uh, very exciting. You know, uh, there's been so much speculation uh, about this car and so many myths and all that kind of stuff, but here it is in the flesh, and we're going to take it out on the road, and you'll get to see it and uh, possibly hear it. If your hearing's real good, but you have to listen very carefully because it's electric. And the man behind the whole project is here, Elon Musk. Elon, come on in here. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Well, congratulations. Thank uh, you. I mean, I know this has been a long gestation period and, and, and ups and downs and, you know, people will never work and all the kind of stuff you go through. Sure. But this is the first customer car, right? Yes, this is production unit one. Wow. Wow. Very, very neat. Uh, take us through it. Now, I know we've, we've read about it in all the magazines, but it's always been from a writer's point of view. Yeah. Uh, you're the guy behind it. Tell us exactly what we have here. We started with an Elise chassis, mm -hmm. um, but this car is 30% heavier and about six inches longer than an Elise. So we, we actually had to modify the chassis extensively. Okay. And we also lowered the door sill. The wheelbase is about uh, three inches longer. Oh, okay. And how uh, much heavier is it than a standard Elise? Uh, it's about 30% uh, heavier. So this is a 2,650-pound okay. car approximately. But, wow. That's, but, but at 2,600 pounds, you're still six to seven hundred pounds lighter than a Corvette or something yes. equivalent to that. Yeah. Uh, you kind of bristle when people, oh, they've just modified a Lotus, but that isn't what you <laughs> did at all, is no, it? No. Uh, no. This really is a brand new car. That's part of the reason why, you know, people say it's loot it being a converted Lotus. Well, it's flat out untrue. Yeah. Um, there's not a single body panel in common with the Lotus. This is an old carbon fiber body. Um, it's, not, it's not even made by Lotus. It's made by Sorteria in France. Right. We did a count of, of unmodified Lotus parts. So only about 8% okay. of the, the parts in the car are actually uh, Lotus heritage. The powertrain, uh, basically the, uh, the battery, the motor, uh, power electronics, and the transmission are all Tesla uh, design manufactured components. Right. And what we, what we do is we actually have a Lotus just to assembly of the glider, which is assembly of everything except the powertrain. Then they ship it to uh, California, where Tesla uh, installs the powertrain. So Tesla is actually the, the end manufacturer right. of the of the car. It, it, it's, it's considered a California-made car uh, because the majority of the value is actually manufactured right. in California. Right. I have my 1909 Baker electric car next door. Well, I have the original Edison batteries, the alkalines, but I run it on deep cycle batteries, uh, essentially golf cart batteries. Right. And those ones, you charge them fully all the way up, and then you run them all the way down, and then you charge them all the way up again. 
This you always want to keep what between 40 and 80 percent charge, something like that. You know, this really doesn't uh, it doesn't actually care about the state of charge. Oh, you, you, okay. you could leave it at uh, five percent. You could leave it at 90 percent. It's capable of doing a full charge from zero to 100 percent in three and a half hours. You can actually plug it in anywhere. You just need extension cord. In fact, it'll take okay. different amperages. And you use. Let me see if I'm correct. Six thousand eight hundred and thirty-one batteries. Is that what it is? Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that seems almost amazing to me. Well, those six thousand eight hundred thirty-one cells are all assembled into one pack, um, and then inside the pack there are blades. The advantage of having so many small cells is that we can we can isolate each cell, mm -hmm. so that even if something bad happens to that cell, it catches on fire or anything, it's isolated, gotcha. and it's, it, there's not that much energy in each individual cell, so we can protect, gotcha. you know, ensure that one cell doesn't cause a cascading effect in another cell. So it's not like so. Christmas lights, if one goes out, they all right. go out. No, no, not at all. You know, the thing that's fascinating me about this car is you've eliminated all the negatives of an electric car. A lot of times when people would convert existing cars to electric, they'd be slower, it didn't have the range, right. less safe. So what do you got really? I mean, you've managed to make essentially a true sports car. You know, I'm instinctively looking for dual exhaust <laughs> and I, I'm not gonna find it. You got a splitter back there and of course you have the four wheel disc brakes and, and everything else as well. With the electromagnetic braking, um, you really uh, don't have to put much wear and tear on the brakes. Okay. Um, in fact, this car should be a very, very low maintenance car because there are no tune-ups required, no oil changes. Right. Because of the fact that you use regenerative braking where you recapture the energy of motion, put it back right. into the pack, uh, you actually uh, won't even wear out the brakes. Now, I heard originally they were a one-speed, now you've got the two-speed transmission, correct? Well, the first initial cars, we're really, we're only talking about the first hundred cars or so, um, they will be provided with the two-speed transmission but fixed in second okay. gear. What we have in development is uh, an upgraded motor and, and power electronics, right. which will, with a single speed, exceed the specifications of okay. the two-speed car. Gotcha. Is there anything to see under the hood? As a car guy, I just want to look under there. Wow, look at that mill! <laughs> Yeah, there's really nothing to look at here. <laughs> this, unlock, this is the power electronics module. Right. Um, this is the this is the corner of the battery pack here. Okay. And what is this here? Standard water glycol mix for the uh, liquid cooling of the battery pack. Oh, okay. We actually have the trunk set up such that you can have a set of golf clubs. You know, actually, I buy sports cars like this so I don't have to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at this. Cool. And it has air conditioning as well. Oh yeah, yeah. The AC system is both for the passenger section as well as for the battery pack. I see. We're expecting somewhere on the order of 100,000 miles for the battery pack. Wow. Well, let's take it for a spin. You know, the great thing about electricity is uh, you get full torque from zero RPM. You know, with a gas car, you'd have to sort of bring the revs to like three grand or four grand, pop the clutch, to get what you get right off the line with this. You know, most electric cars you drive feel bottom heavy because they're carrying a lot of batteries. I don't get that feeling from this. It's eerily quiet, it's amazing. It doesn't make any noise. All you hear is the wind noise. I like that it's a sports car. It's not some dorky little four-door econo box. I mean, it's something that's pretty cool and is environmentally safe, so there's something to be said for that. You can kind of imagine that electric engine noise as a supercharger wine if you want. You know what you can do? You can get like a, a, a CD of like car noises, like a Bugatti or a Ferrari, pop that in so when you pull up the lights and stuff, kind of help you get over, make the transition to the electric. And having uh, driven my 1909 Baker Electric a lot, I know how uh, reliable electrics can be. I mean, I've had my Baker now 10 or 12 years, and I've had no trouble, nothing. All I do is charge the batteries in it. So here we are 100 years later. It's pretty impressive. Nice interior. And I'll be honest, there's not many cars quicker off the line than this. Watch how quickly I can pull away. Like a steam car, you've got a tremendous amount of torque at any RPM or at any speed. Watch. Accelerations are right. We're just pulling away from the Mercedes we got trailing us. I have to pull over and let him uh, catch up. It's an eerie feeling, not feeling any internal combustion stuff happening. But it is fun to watch a tachometer go to 13 grand. Electric car in the rain, should I be worried? Nah.
You know, it handles nicely. You know, just for fun, go back and look at the uh, road test we did at my 1909 Baker Electric. That went 110 miles on a charge. This goes 220 and a lot faster. There's all kinds of bad jokes you could make. It's shocking how good it is, and I'm getting a charge out of driving it, and you can feel the electricity in the air, but I'm not going to do those. I just want to say uh, it's a real sports car. It handles good. It's fast. And uh, hey, if this is the future, I'm not that worried. See you next week. Watch me take off. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look back at a piece of footage that never aired on this YouTube show. That's what was amazing to me, and I thought people might get a kick at it, seeing how far Tesla has come since those modest beginnings. So uh, it was interesting to me. I hope it was interesting to you. Uh, let me know in the comments section what you think, and maybe we'll go through the archives and see if we got other stuff in there that hasn't aired. But don't worry, we got plenty of new content coming every week. So see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>